Welcome to the Philippine Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here's a menu of some of our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. minutes is all about the automobile. This is all of focus and we'll be right back after this short break. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go. Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Seven-seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Isuzu. Known for being Isuzu's toughest pickup, the D-Max is here with its latest variant. This car review is all about the D-MAX LSA. The exterior of the D-MAX LSA is one that boasts modern styling. This is evident with every dark gray front grille and bumper coupled with sidestep board and rocker panel cargo extender, and roof rails. These features make up for a tough stance of the LSA. Furthermore, the two-tone 18-inch alloy wheels complete the look of the iconic pickup. Let's check out the interior design of the LSA. Inside the LSA, mostly everything is dark and fitted with leather seats, not much different from the other existing LSA variants. The front seats feature bucket seats with adjustable headset, back pockets, and convenience hook. While comfort is a top priority in the LSA, convenience is also the main focus here. The pickup is equipped with the auto climate control air conditioning system, passive entry, push start stop system, 12 volt accessory socket, three USB charging ports. For the infotainment system, the LSA comes with an eight inch full touch infotainment system that is available in CD, DVD, Bluetooth, USB, and iPod connectivity, among others. 
it's time to take a look at what's under the hood of the LSA. The LSA is powered by a 3.0 liter four-cylinder inline blue power diesel engine with VGS turbo intercooler that is capable of generating 177 PS of power and 380 Nm of torque. These figures are coupled with a six-speed manual transmission with gear shift indicator. For safety and security, the LSA is equipped with anti-lock braking system with electronic brake force distribution and brake assist, traction control, electronic stability control, hill start assist, and hill descent control. That was all about the Isuzu D-MAX LSA, Isuzu's latest offering in the pickup segment. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to Auto Focus, where we now have the latest auto industry news. Isuzu Philippines has officially turned over six dump trucks to Anseca Development Corporation. During the early years of Anseca, uh, my father was able to procure 10 PDs, and those were primarily used as hauling units. And I think, in a way, I'm proud to say some of those units are still alive right now and still serving Anseca, of course, not on the howling activities, but more on the auxiliary support and operations. In the grueling business of earth moving, we are very cost sensitive, and Isuzu Trucks brings that efficiency and makes us competitive with other industry players. According to Steve M. Ginko, General Manager of Isuzu Cebu Incorporated, the six brand new CYH 52S with 20 cubic meter drum trucks are equipped with eco-friendly diesel technology. Meanwhile, in his message at the formal turnover ceremony, IPC Executive Vice President Shojiro Sakoda reiterated that among the many reasons for IPC's market dominance over the years, the ability to meet customers' ever-changing needs has always been a priority. Isuzu also highlighted the after-sales support that they provide to their clients along with every purchase called the Isuzu Advantage. Isuzu trucks need no introduction. They've been in the industry of mining, earth moving for quite some time here now in Philippines. So yeah, uh, it doesn't need marketing. Solidifying its position as one of the Philippines' most prominent multi-brand automotive distributors, the AutoHub Group launches its own smartphone app, the AutoHub Mobile App. Uh, AutoHub Group is very, 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 very proud to announce that uh, we are the first automotive dealership to launch uh, the AutoHub uh, Mobile App. Because we found out that customers have difficulty sometimes calling the dealership, especially during peak hours. And then to call the dealership, sometimes if there's so many people incoming calls, then the operator cannot handle all the calls at the same time. And then sometimes transferring to the reservations department, 
is also a challenge. So we thought to cut the process, the best would be through an app since technology now is, is the thing and everybody has their cell phone. So I don't know any car owner that doesn't have a cell phone. No, so that would be great that, you know, we have an auto hub app. So for them to set an appointment without talking to anyone, just download the app and cuts the long process to a very, very short period of time. Designed to enhance customer experience and engagement, the AutoHub mobile app allows customers to seamlessly book an after-sales service appointment with just a few taps on their mobile devices and monitor the real-time service status of their vehicle. The AutoHub mobile app comes in user-friendly Android and iOS applications, equipped with a social media-inspired aesthetic and user experience. Users can use the app easily by registering a valid email address or Facebook account. According to the company, they will continue to give their loyal customers innovative solutions, quality products, and reliable services. MyRide Expo Manila 2020, produced and hosted by Pinnacle Mana Events Corporation, will be happening on February 19 to 21, 2020, at the SMX Convention Center, Mall of Asia. So MyRide Expo Manila 2020 is uh, the first international modified cars and bikes expo that is happening here at the Philippines for the first time. When we conceptualized this particular event, we knew I've got a Filipino partner, so all we are three of us. So Philippines and India were always in our vision. And most importantly, Filipinos love to modify cars, love to modify their bikes, and this is a passion for them. My Ride Expo Manila 2020 is an international exhibition featuring modified cars and bikes with supercars. It will host more than 50 modified cars and bikes coming from Manila and across the Philippines, including 10 supercars in the VIP area, plus sponsors and exhibitors, boots and stands. These cars will compete for the top place in various categories, overseen by international and local judges and people's votes for a total cash prize of 1.5 million pesos. They can purchase this through our website, www.myrideexpo.com, and as well as through SM Online, SM Tickets Online, and SM Outlets. Apart from that, we've got our ticket partners all across. So if you go to our Facebook page, you will find also on our web website, we'll find a poster with all our ticket partners. Motor Image has introduced three new Subaru models at the recently concluded Singapore Motor Show 2020. The lineup includes the Forester E-Boxer, Forester GT Edition, and Impreza. As presented, the all-new Forester E-Boxer has a self-charging, mild hybrid E-Boxer system. This combines battery-powered electric motor assistance with two of Subaru's core technologies, boxer engine and symmetrical all-wheel drive. The Subaru e-boxer will be the first model in the Philippines lineup to have hybrid technology and we are very excited to bring it by the second half of the year as it will be a good alternative for Filipino buyers who want fuel economy and want to be eco-friendly. Motor Image has also launched the Forester GT Edition. It is the second GT Edition model being offered in Singapore with a special aero kit which has four well-made and integrated elements. Both the Forester E-Boxer and Forester GT Edition are equipped with the new 8-inch display audio system with Apple CarPlay and Android Audio connectivity and a 360-degree around-view monitor system, which enables drivers to park and maneuver with ease. Meanwhile, the new Subaru Impreza has an improved styling, convenience, and mechanical upgrades. It sports a revised front and rear fascia inclusive of new LED headlamps and blacked-out tail lamps, new 17-inch wheels, a speed-sensitive door lock, and rear seat reminder feature, a newly added SI drive function, and retuned suspension. The new Subaru Visive Adrenaline concept was also highlighted during the Singapore Motor Show 2020. 
its first concept vehicle designed under Subaru's new design philosophy. For future Subarus, we are also displaying the Subaru Visiv concept, the SUV edition, which is paving the way for the new design language of Subaru for the future models. 2020 should be an exciting year for Subaru. As mentioned, we will be introducing the Forester GT edition, the e-boxer, and the big surprise, another SUV come second half of 2020. We hope that uh, all Subaru fans will be waiting for it and anticipating the new models as they are sure to bring great surprises. In celebration of its fifth anniversary, Club Ertiga Philippines held a general assembly in Pasay City. New members were invited to bring their cars, and Club Ertiga Philippines stickers were put on their preferred side of their unit. Meanwhile, Ertigal's stickers were put on cars of the women counterpart of the club. The new members were then oriented on club policies and guidelines. The club, which started in 2015, has grown exponentially with members coming from all over the country and has continued to grow even more. Many people are already looking at the Ertiga as a good car and then they're looking to find some sort of support system for the car so they try to join a club that will be beneficial for them. So basically Club Ertiga is getting bigger and bigger. For the past years, the club has been organizing activities and events that help their members with concerns related to their Suzuki Ertiga units as well as for the community. These include feeding and calamity programs, elderly support, and other charitable events. When you see that there is an opportunity to help, we try to gather everybody and give highlight to that occurrence or to that uh, instance. And uh, if they can help, we provide a channel for them to help. To all uh, owners of Suzuki Ertiga, uh, I would like to invite you to join uh, Club Ertiga Philippines. We are found almost anywhere in the Philippines. Uh, you can see our club sticker. You can officially enter the Club Ertiga Philippines world by joining our uh, FB page. Autofocus the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine takes another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. Dad, naplatan kami. Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara. Excuse me. <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. Suzuki. All new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Seven-seater in style. All-new El Tiga debut. Welcome back to this edition of Autofocus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's Head to Head, our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belonging to the same category. The MPV segment is one that is fast growing among the industry. Hence, it's important to have great ones available in the market. In this head to head, we're looking at two MPVs that prove they are worth their big nameplates. We have the 2019 Toyota Avanza and the 2018 Mitsubishi Expander GLS. Watch this. Our first stop, the respective powertrains of our featured vehicles. 
Under the hood of the Avanza is a powerful 1.5 liter engine that is capable of generating 103 PS and 136 Nm of torque. These figures are coupled with a 4-speed automatic transmission. Meanwhile, for the Expander GLS, the engine runs on a 1.5 liter DOHC that produces a generous set of numbers with 105 PS of power and 141 Nm of torque. This engine is mated to a 4-speed automatic transmission, the same with the Avanza. Let's have a tour of the two cars' exterior designs and see what they both have to offer. The Avanza has gotten a facelift. Compared to its predecessor, it now looks sportier and bolder while staying true to its identity. For one, the front fascia now carries a different yet familiar looking grille. Meanwhile, these new sets of split-type LED headlamps seamlessly complement the character lines of the hood sheet metal, as well as front fog lamps alongside its dark front grille. Over at the rear, the sporty rear design and fin-type antenna complete the Avanza's modern look. The wheels, which come with a new tone, five-spoke design, add a confident stance to the Avanza. On the other hand, the exterior design of the Expander GLS has that sporty and modern touch. The main highlights are these sharp lines that go around the vehicle, the set of LED headlamps, the dynamic shield grille, and the halogen headlights which complete the looks. The Expander GLS powers through any road with 16-inch alloy wheels. It's time to head inside the Avanza and the Expander GLS. Inside the Avanza, it's spacious enough for a seven-seater to sit through any ride feeling comfortable. The interior design cues are patterned after versatility and practical daily use. For the infotainment system, the Avanza comes equipped with a 6.8-inch captive touch panel display infotainment system, which is also present in premium Toyota models. Meanwhile, inside the Expander GLS, the dashboard looks all simple, yet it's a show stealer. Everything the driver needs is within reach, and it looks elegant. It further boasts the 7-inch touchscreen display that comes with six speakers and is available with AM, FM, MP3, USB, AUX, and Bluetooth connectivity. When it comes to safety and security, both the Avanza and the Expander GLS come equipped with the necessary features. Aside from two SRS airbags for the driver and passenger, the Avanza has three-point ELR seat belts for all seats and an ISOFIX child seat restraint system suited for starting families. On top of its anti-lock brake system, the Avanza also gets upgraded with side mirror integrated turn signals. For the Expander GLS, it's equipped with the needed features included central locking, anti-lock braking system, and airbags among others. That wraps up our head-to-head -head featuring two MPVs that are both loaded with features that match the need of the customers. The 2019 Toyota Avanza and the 2018 Mitsubishi Expander GLS. More about the automobile here in Autofocus as we usher in our segment featuring the autos of the world. Spotlighting concept cars as well as newly launched and about to be launched automobile models from around the world. For your exciting viewing in this edition of your automobile electronic magazine, we have the 2020 McLaren GT. Let's watch this. A mid-engine Grand Tourer from McLaren? Can the prevalently supercar producer keep up with its well-established rivals in the segment like the Bentley Continental GT or the Aston Martin DB11? The answer is a resounding yes! The new McLaren GT is nothing to envy from its British cousins. Having the engine mounted in its midsection, it has a total of 570 liters of storage space divided into two trunks, one at the rear and one at the front. The latter larger than what the Porsche 911 can offer, 
being taken from the McLaren 720S, hence the very aggressive aerodynamic teardrop shape typical of modern supercars. It has a very well-mattered approach to the road. Acceleration is rounded and gradual, and curving is precise and secured thanks to its adaptive dampers and hydraulic steering, just like what a proper gentleman's car should be. But don't be fooled by its rather low-pitched growling exhaust because its turbocharged 4-liter engine can launch you from 0 to 100 in just 3.2 seconds, just half a second slower than the McLaren 720S. Equipped with a new exhaust system, a new engine, and a new integrated spoiler, it is not a 720S dressed in a tuxedo, being two-thirds of the car developed specifically for it. The interior does not disappoint. Solid alloy gear paddles, vertical screen infotainment, digital gauge cluster, wing doors, Bowers & Wilkins Hi-Fi system, wrapped together by ambient lighting and full leather interior to give its passengers a clean yet luxurious haven of well-crafted materials. Visibility outside is quite good, thanks to its shorter and lowered hood, and the McLaren engineers has given it a high ground clearance comparable to a Mercedes S-Class, so you won't have to worry about speed bumps. Overall, the McLaren GT is a well-rounded Grand Tour, capable of taking both bumpy old town roads and long superhighway journeys across the country, but still maintaining its McLaren DNA. A well-executed compromise between performance and livability. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. It's fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back to Autofocus. Our special feature is next. Volkswagen Philippines decided to take it up a notch when they took members of the motoring media to a recent ride and drive activity. Aboard the Lamando, Volkswagen did a culinary and art crawl around Baguio City. Indeed, a unique way of highlighting the features of the vehicle. We have the highlights of this fun event here on Special Feature. Watch this. <laughs> The chilly month of December then became much cooler for the select members of the motoring media as Volkswagen brought them all the way to Baguio City. The warm welcome, though, was courtesy of chefs Vicky Clemente of Mama's Table and Sao del Rosario of Café Fleur, who prepared their signature dishes at their popular dining establishments in Baguio City and Pampaga, respectively. After a tasty culinary experience, the art crawl began. The team toured the Tamawan Art Village, where the talented Baguio artists have managed to blend indigenous aesthetics and exquisite Cordillera and craftsmanship to create artworks depicting their love for the Volkswagen brand, particularly for the iconic Beetle. 
We went all the way to Baguio, the north, and it's actually Baguio is Volkswagen country, so if you go to Baguio, there are a lot of Volkswagen lovers, and there from that passion for the brand spawned uh, artists who wanted to create artworks for about iconic Volkswagen vehicles such as the Beetle, the Combi, the Sakbayan. And uh, we, we thought it would be great to bring the Volkswagen Lamani there because of uh, the timeless design that goes into every Volkswagen and link it to the artworks that were brought about by the artists from Baguio. It was also the perfect moment for the announcement of the Volkswagen Lamando Art Competition for Baguio Artists. The competition puts the Lamando design elements in the creative hands of Baguio's best and up-and-coming artists. The awarding ceremony will be held in the first quarter of 2020. The Lamando, which made its Philippine debut in 2018, is powered by a 1.4-liter, four-cylinder, inline turbo fuel-injected gasoline engine with Blue Motion technology. With a lot of horsepower, 150 PS, and then around 280 newton meters of torque. With seven-speed DSG transmission, it gives you so much power when you need it, but at the fuel efficiency of a 1.4-liter engine. So it's really very comparable to the two-liter engines out there, but then not as a gas guzzler as them. But then, of course, inside you have the trims of the leather seats and the active info display in our SEL model. What is an active info display? Basically, it's an LED where you see the speedometer and the tachometer in an LED screen and our huge infotainment system as well. It turned out to be ideal for the drive on the three expressways, North Luzon, Subic Clark Tarlac, and Tarlac Pangasinan La Union, and the twisty climb up to Baguio City. The two-zone climatronic air conditioning also came in handy in managing the interior climate comfort of the Lamando, particularly in adapting to the stark temperature differences between the lowlands of Metro Manila and the cool 5,000 foot and above altitude of Baguio City. It's a good drive, especially now that you have Asin Road and then we were able to open Cannon Road on the way back, no? That was a pretty big help. So what happens it was, like yesterday, uh, I divided the highway, so everyone got to experience the cars, the highway driving. Then the second half was all country roads and winding roads. Again, we divided the different legs of it, no? So everyone gets to try that out. Then finally driving around Baguio in itself is already a different style of driving. It's city, but it's also winding and stuff like that. So you get to experience a car in that environment. It's a beautiful place. The weather was fantastic. It was cool in the night and it was blue skies and sunny weather in the day that, that helped. And then coming down the next day, you know, we haven't passed Cannon Road in a while and it was so nice. The Lamando is nice because it's the out of the lot. It's it's the bigger one, no? So it's wider, which makes it uh, handle better. So when we were doing the winding roads, the car was very stable. It had a lot of power, right? So when you the steep uphills, you'd have a sharp turn and a steep uphill, no struggles at all. You just step on it and up it went, right? At the same time, it's got that German engineering feel of, you know, that uh, stable when we're cruising. When we went fast, you didn't feel fast, you know, and everyone felt comfortable in the car. It's got all the bells and whistles too. You can hook up, you got your iPhone there, and I use Siri all the time, so that was great. So I'd like to invite our viewers to experience what our friends from the media experience, the new Volkswagen Lamando where it is our flagship vehicle from Volkswagen. It starts with the SE at 1.5 million, with our top-of-the-line SEL at 1.7 million. The two-day trip to Baguio City gave participants a better appreciation of the local vibrant art and culinary scene while also experiencing the power and capabilities of the Volkswagen Lamando. 
That's it for our special feature. We hope you enjoy. And up next is another exciting feature in autos of the world. This time around the 2020 Ford Puma. Let's watch this. Ford recently revealed full UK pricing for the stylish new Ford Puma, with high specification first edition models to be exclusively offered for delivery from January ahead of the full range becoming available to order early next year. The Ford Puma Titanium, available from €20,845, features segment first driver and passenger lumbar massage seats as standards in addition to advanced wireless charging. The Ford Puma Titanium First Edition, available from €22,295, features comfort and safety technology packs including intelligent adaptive cruise control, rear-view camera, heated seats and heated steering wheel, available in 1.0L EcoBoost Hybrid 125 PS MHEV. The Puma Titanium also features exclusive exterior and interior details and finishes that complement the model's seductive design. Puma First Editions are also available in ST Line X trims, adding sporty interior and exterior design cues and sport suspension, alloy pedals, full digital instrument cluster, and LED headlamps. Starting from €25,195, ST Line X First Edition includes hands free power tailgate, 18 inch alloy wheels, and 10 speaker BO Premium Audio, available with 1.0L EcoBoost Hybrid, 125 PS or 155 PS MHEV. Puma ST Line X First Edition Plus is available to order from €27,345 with 1.0L EcoBoost Hybrid 155 PS, adding panorama roof and 19-inch alloy wheels. Dad, Dad? Dad? You okay? Iwan mo na yan. Ako na bahala dyan. Let's go. Hatid ko na kayo. Tara! Excuse me? <coughs> Let's go! Thank you. You always have my back. Have fun. I will. Suzuki, all new El Tiga. Life is beating fast. Find what you're waiting for. Seven seater in style. All new El Tiga debut. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate here on Autofocus as we have our second car review this week. When it comes to raising standards of quality, craftsmanship, and safety, here comes Mazda Philippines' newest offerings to the local market, the all-new Mazda 3. On this car review, we have all about the new hatchback. Watch this. Let's check out the exterior of the Mazda 3. The Mazda 3 is the first model by Mazda to feature the evolved Kodo design language. At a glance, it's visible that achieving a clean exterior finish is part of the design direction for the Mazda 3. The character lines have been eliminated to achieve a form that is determined by the interplay of light, shadow, and reflections of the surrounding environment. The windshield wipers are hidden as well as the traditional driver's side keyhole. Replacing it are the locking and unlocking sensors behind the main door handles and underneath the tailgate logo. With these exterior features, Mazda 3 aims to highlight the less is more Japanese minimalist aesthetic. The 
it's time to step inside the Mazda 3. The minimalist exterior of the Mazda 3 is reflected in its interior. For one, by removing visual noise, a cleaner cabin was realized without the loss of functionality. A simplified symmetrical layout of the dashboard, driver-oriented instrument panel, and interior trims have all been adopted in the Mazda 3 cockpit design. The user interface has been meticulously designed to make it easily understood and operated without shifting the line of sight. These are essential parts of achieving a safe and comfortable driving environment. The Mazda 3 also has been designed to center on the comfort and convenience of the driver and passengers. The steering wheel allows up to 70 millimeters of telescopic adjustment, while the adjustable seat supports the pelvis and promotes a natural S-shaped curve with the driver's spine. In addition, even the Mazda Connect infotainment system has been redesigned from the ground up. A wider 8.8-inch display has been adopted with a simplified graphic user interface layout and refined operability. It is positioned higher and further away from the driver so comfort and convenience information such as media, maps, and warning and alert details are a mere glance away. Let's now check out what's under the hood of the Mazda 3. The Mazda 3 is powered by a 2.0-liter gasoline engine that is capable of giving out 154 PS of power and 200 newton meters of torque. These figures are coupled with 6-speed automatic transmission, which forwards all power to front wheels. When it comes to safety and security, the Mazda Pro Active Safe offers the driver confidence building reassurance while providing all cabin occupants a thoroughly enjoyable driving experience. With the introduction of a 7th airbag across all variants, advanced eye active sense technologies in the premium line, as well as passive safety innovations designed to protect cabin occupants, Mazda is constantly making efforts to advance its safety technologies and reduce the incidence of accidents on the road. That was our car review featuring the Mazda 3, Mazda Philippines' newest addition to its roster of quality vehicles. Hey, right, today we'll be showing you how a Unichip is installed, how it is tuned, and what are the benefits of actually getting one installed in your car. And here we have a 2017 Toyota Vios with the latest dual VVTi engine that already has an intake and a header. So we're gonna be installing Unichip next on this car to get more power. In a nutshell, what Unichip is, it's a computer that goes on top of the stock ECU and we're able to program this to give different commands to the ECU that says, okay, give us more fuel, give us less fuel, give us more spark plug timing, give us less spark plug timing, and among other things. More advanced features are we could use this to control additional injectors to supply a turbocharger, injector controllers for diesel engines, nitrous control, and sometimes also map switching. We can have up to five different maps for this one, such as if you want valet mode, total shutdown mode, immobilizer mode, and all of that. And this is where Unichip is installed. It's gonna be installed very, very near the car's ECU, which in this case for the Vios, it's hidden behind the glove compartment. So it's eight wires to install. On most other cars nowadays, the computer box is usually found in the engine bay. Like if you have a Civic, you have a Jazz, you have a Focus. All the computer boxes are now found inside the engine and that's where Unichip will also be installed. So the way that we install it is we have to cut and splice a few wires. It's normally about eight. Those are power, ground, uh, throttle position, crank position, mass airflow sensor, among other things. So every joint we actually solder and then we shrink wrap and we tape over. So rest assured that nothing will get shorted, nor will it catch fire. That simply does not happen. This is a Unichip wiring diagram, only we have access to it, the official Unichip installer for the Philippines, which is us in Speed Lab. In the Unichip database, there are over a thousand cars that have diagrams for it. It ranges from something as old as a 
1996 Corolla 4 AFA engine to the latest Ranger Raptor which we're going to be available in a few months. So it's basically eight wires here. These are the eight wires that connect to the unit chip. Then these eight wires connect to the wiring harness of the ECU. It's, by the way, just the wiring harness, not the ECU itself. We don't open this up, we don't touch this. So that remains as is. A little bit of history about Unichip. This has been around actually for the better part of 25 years. The guy who invented it, Peter De Vert, is Dutch. He currently lives in South Africa. That's where he produces it. I think he gets a special government grant from the South African government for that one. And then it's actually exported all over the world. Uh, you can check it out on the internet, you can check out all the reviews, it's there. It's Unichip because it really is universal. We can use it for pretty much anything with an ECU. Gas, diesel, Chinese, European, American, Japanese, Korean cars. As long as it's an ECU, most likely we can install Unichip on it. So there are still certain cars like this Toyota Vios. You cannot remap the ECU. You cannot change the settings inside the ECU. So your only option for tuning is with the Unichip. All right, now uh, the Unichip is now connected to the ECU. For this particular car, we're using the Unichip Q4, which has an additional four wires to control the throttle because all cars now have electronic throttle. Uh, what this basically does is it equalizes the throttle opening because with all cars nowadays what happens is you step on the pedal this fast the throttle butterfly opens this fast that's the delay that everybody is complaining about with all modern cars you step on it like this it goes like this so what the unit chip does with the throttle control is it makes it one is to one you step on it fast it opens fast also so resulting in a mas malakas may bat na koche. So right now, it's connected to the ECU, everything's working, the car's running, the engine is running, uh, it revs fine, there are no check engine lights whatsoever, so that means that installation is done correctly and everything is working. Uh, with every unit chip installed, we actually put in a unique starting program depending on what the ECU is. Uh, in the unit chip database, there are over 100 starting programs for 100 different cars and 100 different vehicle models and makes and engines actually. So after this one, we're going to be putting the car on the dyno and we're going to be tuning it there to see what the final horsepower is. Uh, horsepower and torque, actually. So stay tuned for that one. We're going to be putting it on now. Okay, we're done with the tuning of the Vios here with the unit chip and this is the results. This red line here is the baseline power. This already has our colder intake and our headers. So it's about 91 horses, which is actually pretty good for a 1.3 car. For reference, 90 horses or so is the territory of about 1.5 cars like the Jazz and the 1.5 Vios. This blue line here is after tuning with the unit chip. So at peak power, we're at 100 horses, so it's almost 10 horses more at 6,000 RPM. But the biggest gain here is actually, if you look at the torque graph on this side, at the initial step, there's about 6 foot-pounds here. This is even bigger, it's about 8 foot-pounds. Then this dip here is another 8 foot-pounds. So, and this is at the very critical 1,800 to 3,500 area where most of your overtaking happens. So the end result is a faster car, more powerful, a lot more responsive, and drive normally. Given this, you should see about 8 to 10% better mileage. So that's basically the whole unit chip install and tuning process. As from start to finish, it took us about three hours total from wiring up the car to putting it on the dyno to tuning it to getting out of the dyno so it's probably less than half a day uh, and you walk away with 10 horses on a 1.3 Vios for other cars say bigger engines like a 1.8 Civic it's anywhere from 12 to 15 horses more for turbo diesels we actually get 40 sometimes 50 horses more 
The best part is, when you sell the car, you can actually take the unit chip out, install it in whatever next car that you're gonna purchase, be a gasoline car, diesel car, any brand, as long as it has an ECU, your unit chip can be installed in that and can be tuned again, reused, make more power for your new car. And that's all the focus this week. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, we hope you have found this edition of your Automobile Electronic Magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Until the next time, this has been Ray Louis Gamboa. Thank <laughs> you.